This is video number four. It is on the information operation the sheriff and under sheriff conducted following my arrest. The last video was covered the newspaper articles that came out right after my arrest and how the sheriff outright lied in those and in some instances just misled. Uh, this one is going to be on the probable cause affidavit and how the military rules of information operations were applied to the probable cause. Now probable cause is a report that is sent after an arrest is made for probable cause. Arrest in Oklahoma can be made on probable cause or they can be made on a warrant that a judge signs. Now according to Oklahoma statutes on you know, citizens arrest, any citizen can make an arrest. You have just as much right to arrest the sheriff as the sheriff has to arrest you. And we believe in citizens' arrest in Oklahoma. But after a law enforcement agency makes an arrest, they they and they conduct their investigation, they compile this. See, it's not very big. This is what was sent to Kenny Wright, front and back pages, and it's a synopsis of the investigation. And it can't leave out any information here that exonerates the arrested individual. It's got to be included in here so the DA, Kenny Wright in this uh, instance, can make a fully informed decision. Okay, And that's not what happened in this probable cause and that's why the charges are going to be dropped or the district attorney will wish that he had. It goes to a jury trial but it's, it's unthinkable that it will uh, once he finds out what the, the rest, what the arresting agency left out of this probable cause. Before I get into the uh, deception aspect and the which is lies and the information security which is withholding information in this case withholding exculpatory evidence or information that exonerates me totally from what I'm being charged with I want to just show you an example of how dirty the sheriff is okay now remember, the, uh, indisp the indisputed facts are that I shot this drug dealer from the arm length, arm's length away one time with a small caliber gun, it's a 380 hollow points, all right, in his leg, away from his vital organs. You know, I wasn't aiming anywhere but at his leg, and that's not even a dispute. I didn't shoot as he's going down the road, you know, nothing like that. Okay, just one time in the leg. The very first page of this states the offenses committed slash anticipated charges is Title 21, Section 652C, shooting with intent to kill. Okay. This sheriff is so dirty. I mean, he, I mean, and plus that, the people that are that dirty have no pride. And they, they figure that no, the public's not going. Actually, If you remember in the article video we, we did last on video number three, the information operation in the article, that was to influence uh, decision making by the general public, which of course that's potential jurors. And in that he said that he uh, anticipated charging me with a uh, shoot with intent to kill. Okay, One time in the leg from three, three feet away. And the second charge is uh, Felony pointing a firearm. Those are the two charges that he anticipated on the, the, the DA would file. And of course, the DA didn't file either one of those. Of course, the two elements that we discussed in the previous video about the news articles were uh, deception and information security that are used in an information operation to influence. Uh, it, in that case, is the public's uh, decision making, and now it's the district attorneys that we're going to try to influence in the in the probable cause uh, affidavit. All right, now deception would be lying, saying things that aren't true, right? And of course, you'd want to say things that aren't true about the drug dealer to make him look better, and things that aren't true about me to make me look bad. Now, information security. Security means protection. So now we're going to protect or withhold inf uh, information in their probable cause. Now this part is illegal. Okay, they can't do that. 
Well, we'll see if they get charged, if the sheriff gets charged. But what they did was they withheld uh, exculpatory information and in the probable cause affidavit that shows they never had probable cause. It was never probable, more probable that I committed a crime than not. Okay? Now, on page 8 of the affidavit, and all this stuff is linked below, and I'll also put it up on Facebook. Uh, the wound appeared to be a through and through small caliber gunshot to the right thigh from back to front. Okay? Now that's the undersheriff's statement. It's a conclusory statement. That's something else we don't do if we know anything about uh, writing police reports, which he should because he teaches a class at Cleet on this. All right? Conclusory report in law, it's a, it's a conclusion, but there's no basis for it. I mean, how, 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 do you, how did he, you know, how does it appear to be that? Okay? Kind of like when he says that Philpott appeared to be sober. How does a guy laying in, the, in, a, in a hospital bed appear to be sober or not sober? Right, the same thing. Really bad writing here, but uh, okay. Anyway, he doesn't say if he measured it or, or how he comes. He just says now that's a lie. All right, he has an outright lie. It did not appear to be that. I'll get to that in a second. The guy's been a cop for thirty years. I'll show you the picture. I already showed you another one. It doesn't appear to be from the back to the front. Okay, but getting away from that for a second. Here's what the wound nurse stated. Now, the wound nurse is the only person at the ER with the formal training to make a determination on the directional path of the bullet through the flesh. Okay? And I'll include this too, of course. It says, upper thigh from anterior to post, through and through, bleeding controlled, distal sensation, circulation, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So it's, uh, and it's anterior to post, posterior. From front to back, obviously, that's what it is. Now, this is where the undersheriff lied. And remember, they kept that wound nurse report out of the probable cause after the day that they sent Kenny. Well, at the time, it was a previous DA, but, you know, this one hasn't seen it either. Unless he goes through the stack of 100 pictures that they took. See, when they do the investigation, they have a pile this thick on the investigation, a big old file folder, okay, or, or several of them. Well, they have to condense it into what I showed you earlier to send to the DA. He doesn't have the time. He can't possibly go look through all that stuff with 100 cases, right? And, but, you know, they, they didn't send him that. This is the picture right here. See that? If you go look at I'll link it below. Most of that is a drop of blood, okay? It's not even, it's not even the hole, the bullet hole. Now, this is the back of his leg, okay? Now, that hole right there is a whole lot bigger, and if you look right here, you can see over the side, that's where a fragment came out. The hollow point busted up once it got inside the flesh. It didn't hit bone, but it really caused some damage. But that's a, if you blow it up, see that little mark to the side of it? <clears throat> that right there, had, you can see right there where blood is actually coming out of that. And it's flowing out of the big one, it's flowing out of the small one. That's the exit hole guys it's a lot bigger than the other one uh, blood uh, it, it may form it may drip out of an entry hole it flows out of an exit hole the exit hole there is several times larger you know and it's got the the fragment coming out of it the cop knew, knew what that was and he just lied all right now instead of sending these pictures to the DA look what he sent to the DA these two pictures just like this same size and everything black and white okay you can't tell what that is. It looks nasty, doesn't it? Right? But if you have a through and through uh, bullet wound, you have to have both holes to compare to tell which one's entry and which one's exit. Here's the other one he sent Kenny, or sent the DA. But it's the only one that Kenny has, and it's, it's the only one in the PC affidavit. See that? Sorry for moving around. There's that worthless bum I shot, convicted, multiple convicted drug dealer. Who, when I shot him, had an active bench warrant for his arrest for failure to appear on poaching charges out of Missouri, which is four miles away from here. I shot him four miles from where Arkansas, where he has multiple felonies, Missouri and Oklahoma meet. Okay, he gets to he gets to commit all the crimes he wants in Oklahoma because he's an informant, but he gets in trouble for it over in Arkansas, Missouri. Anyway, that's what 
the sheriff, he decided to send those black and white pictures instead of those big color ones. And he withheld the wound nurse's determination. So that right there is part of information security and, and information operation or a propaganda, op uh, propaganda operation, the same thing, okay? But it's illegal when it's exculpatory in, a, in some legal document. So that is why it's going to get dropped.